Hello and welcome to the League Up, your weekly thoroughbred preview podcast live from Trentham Gardens on a beautiful upper hut morning. I haven't sunscreened my ball patch, Paul, so I might be in a bit of trouble here in a minute. It is certainly an absolutely stunning day today. Um, there's a wee bit of cloud cover, but yeah, the sun's come out. There's no wind, whatever to speak of, as we usually get down here in Wellington. <laughs> no. um, and if the races were today, well, it'd be the perfect, the absolute perfect race day. Unfortunately, the races are... Saturday. Mm, yeah. Mm, we'll, we'll be touching on that a little bit later on. Fingers crossed. Good morning, Steve. To you. Hey, How are you? Yeah, very good. Very good. How was last week? Karaka Million. Was Karaka a good Million. Night? Yeah, I think it lived up to the, the hype that surrounds Karaka Million. Early in the proceedings, you had the two mares, or one filly, one mare, saluting at short priced odds. Maven Bell and also Imperatriz. When it came to the two features, uh, Tokyo Tycoon was fantastic. From Huge. where he was, uh, it ran at roughly the 450, 500 metre mark. Uh, for Craig Zaki just to hug that rail, play the patient game, then get the split coming off heels halfway down the straight to finish over the top like he did. Uh, I think he's got a lot in store in terms of not just the rest of the two-year-old season, but as a three-year-old type. So uh, a very deserving winner and hard to make excuses for the back brigade who finished in behind Tokyo Tycoon. And Pro S, uh, look mm. a bit surprising. She drifted so markably on the on the market, uh, the betting pitcher. She opened roughly around about 6.50 with us uh, early week and... I think closed at roughly nine nine fifty ten dollars on the late. So, um, look, we thought that she didn't have to improve a huge amount from the Auckland Guinea speed rating. And she mapped ideally. In particular, she mapped in front of the two key rivals, uh, the two favourites at the point end of the market. Uh, and again, hard to make excuses from the horses that were beaten in behind Proess. So she was a deserved winner when it came to the Kadaka Classic. Yeah, very very good. Back to the the two features. Mm. Um, well, Tiako owned the two year old. Yes, they, they do. How many? I mean, seven, that's seven in a row, in a row now. Yeah. Seven in a row, Tiako. Um, and last week we talked about the OP tax. Mm. Uh, are we going to be having a South African tax soon? Because <laughs> those two boys picked up the million dollar races uh, at Puka Kelly last weekend. Um, they've hit the ground running. We yet. talk we talk about them a wee bit on the show, don't we? Because well, they, yeah. they keep saluting the judge. <laughs> yeah, with good reason. Yes. With yeah. good reason. Another man that was on the ground there at Pukekohe last week was Brendan Popwell up in our Hamilton studio. Good morning, Brendan. Good morning, team. Yes, uh, what a great night it was. Uh, there was uh, it was electric energy uh, there out of uh, Puki with, I think the club did a great job, of course, uh, with, with uh, trying to host the, a big night like that and yes there was those different variables to the night with, without uh, having boys get paid there but I still like what they were able to achieve uh, for the night and of course the racing action which was the most important part look was red hot, track was fair, there was a lot of good things around the night with what was able to happen uh, and yeah th those two million dollar races they lived up to the top billing didn't they with uh, what we saw there with Craig Zaki just producing a perler uh, aboard Tokyo Tycoon uh, and prowess, as Stephen said, just getting in that right spot. Legato, it was always going to be a very hard watch if you were on Legato, and, and that was the case. And look, she somehow finished into fourth position, but um, yeah, that was the, the issue of drawing Barry number one for her, and uh, that, that paved the way. I still thought Wild Knight was good. I thought he was a run where, look, he was closing, and I thought about 150, he was, he was going to really put in those big bounds. But now he's one of the favourites for the Herbie Dyke. Now that becomes a race and a half, doesn't it? The Herbie Dyke mm -hmm. with a likelihood of getting uh, sharp and smart, prowess, wild knight. And then you're getting the Flipperade, Coventina Bay defending champion. That sets herself up for what is going to be a, a terrific day, Legends Day, coming up in a few weeks' time. Yeah, absolutely. Just quickly on that, looked like a few three-year-olds maybe heading that way, Steve. Yeah, then look, three-year-olds have had a, a reasonably good success. Uh, not, not many of them have contested the Herbie Dyke against the older horses at Wait for Age, 2,000 metres at Tarapa, but off the top of my head, Mission Critical won uh, mm. going back a few years ago. I think a filly won out of the Donna Logan stable. The name escapes me, but um, yeah, so three-year-olds, the ones that have contested have gone fairly well, so no knock on the opposition. Well, the, mm. the, the connection's having a crack against well, the old horses. we about the strength of the three-year-olds as well, haven't we? Yeah, and uh, look, uh, one horse uh, that we're, hasn't really been spoken about um, and he didn't take part on Saturday was Whitehack. Mm. Uh, he may be as good as any. Uh, his run in behind pro -S was as good as pro -S, considering you're breaking down the sectionals and the race shape. Uh, I'm not sure where he's heading in the near future. He might be looking at a, maybe a, a Guineas at Tarapa. Uh, mm. That's where they've been... Uh, been setting his races of late Whitehack, but um, yeah, just the depth. It's just three odds are popping up week in, week out. Legato wouldn't have lost any admirers. No, no, no. bit of a bit of a circumstance, really. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Okay, pops back to you, mate. For uh, your maiden of the week, where did you land this week? 
Uh, Valley Girl, was that the name of the horse you were trying to find there, Hunty? Um, yeah, very 100%, good, very 100%, good, Brendan. Brendan. I knew you'd save me. <laughs> well, look, I've got Aidan Rodley uh, in, in uh, the Hamilton studios bellowing out uh, v Valley Girl because, of course, he is our number one fan watching uh, today from the Hamilton studios. Uh, anyway, let's um, move to Maiden of the Week. Yeah, look, uh, look, this is a Maiden where it hasn't run the time, but, boy, it's run a super race in Valare. It's, it's covered a lot of extra ground. It's produced... Very good form lines coming up to this race. If you're on Tempest, maybe just turn away from the screen about now. Uh, if, if, because if you want to be thinking, well, Tempest is a bet next time to the races, um, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and that's probably another reason why we're looking at this particular video. Uh, Valaro, good, can step up next time to the races. But Tempest was the horse that was unlucky, was slow away from the get-go anyway. Uh, and just didn't get that split between two key runners at this crucial stage of the race and then had to come back underneath the race done. Uh, finishes into fifth position. So, um, yeah, Ask Mum was probably one of the maiden wins on the programme there out of Mudder Mudder, but keen to show this race because it just have, could have that chance of, of, of a couple of other runners bouncing out of it. Yeah, nice, nice win. Nice yeah, win it was on the eye, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, look, it went into that race with the right form line. Uh, three starts back or two starts back prior to that victory ran second I'm a rich girl and then last start came out of a really strong speed rating mating at Pukekohe and behind Destiny's Delight so uh, look the form it had the race day form uh, to be one of the horses to beat on Wednesday at Mudder Mudder and got the job done and on Daniel Narclay look he, he has a nice little breeding um, a team uh, over the years and just that family have gone tremendous for him in, in recent times. You look at the mere um, Aravaducci, the half-sister who won a few races, Sans Duch, uh, Duche, who was the mere, or the mother should I say, won three races and it goes back to Ego and Ready Steady who were black type performance as well so uh, it's a family that's kicked plenty of goals and had success for Daniel. What's that noise Paul? Oh, we've, got, we've got a water blaster going here this morning. <laughs> we're obviously in preparation for a Wellington Cup so there's plenty happening. Yeah, oh, I get, I get I'm having a guess. I'm, I'm thinking the boys are testing out the old uh, drones. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Good. Hopefully we get some shots of those a little bit later on. Well, we better get to some racing. Uh, we want to preview three races from Trentham and one from Rickerton Park uh, this morning. Uh, Steve, let's talk about track conditions for Trentham because we think there might be a little bit of aqua about. Yeah, currently a soft five, Thad. Uh, and as you said it earlier, earlier in the show, if they had the meeting today, oh, it would that. be in fine fettle. But... Uh, you're looking at the the overshot there, partly cloudy with a few showers, soft five as I mentioned. Rail goes back in the true position, which I think is key. But the, the question mark and the dilemma around this particular meeting is the showers that are forecast in the next 24 hours. They're meant to hit around about 10 o'clock tonight. It was roughly around about 60 to 80 mils early on, but they reckon they've cut that back to around about 20 mils overnight. So, yeah, my guessing game, it would probably play to around about that 6-7 pentrometer reading, but currently sits at a 5. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. a great time to bring in our no deductions, no surprises <laughs> Paul every motion week. that we have. <laughs> every time. Well, look, if you... Get if, some scratchings, you think? Yes, if you like uh, anyone running tomorrow that uh, loves a heavy track, mm. you may want to get on. You may want to get on now. Yeah, well, I think with the rain radar, they might, the boys might have the rain radar for us. It looks like there could be a bit of something uh, coming. Uh, well, there, there's the North Island disappearing, uh, which obviously doesn't look too... Good, so yeah, maybe we'll see some scratchings. Hopefully not. Oh, uh, yes, we hope that um, we turn the up. The stakes tomorrow. is up, so a lot of the a lot of the connections will roll the dice. And we're not talking about a genuine heavy, a winter heavy. If no. if they can get away with say around roughly 15 mils, and a fine day tomorrow of little showers, uh, six and seven, that's no dramas to most. No, okay. Mm. Let's get to the races now. It's Wellington Cup day, but we want to start with race number seven on the card, and that is the Thorndon Mile, which is an absolute cracking affair. Stephen, run us through this market. Interesting market, headed by La Creek. Look, she's had 89 day freshen up since the Empire rose at Flemington in the spring. $2.10 currently trading off an even quote of $2 earlier in the week. Sharp and smart, sold in that second line at 4.2. Coventina Bay, just out a couple of turns, 450 out to 4.8. Double figures around He's a Doozy, 13 to 12, well backed. Demonetisation, 15 out of roll to 16. Lightning Jack, 26. She has the same quote as Fun Tonic, who peaked at 31. And Conor kieran has gone the other way, 21 out to 26. Best of the rest is Clever Rudds at a $31 price. So, look, overall summary, just stifle betting a touch. La Creek will come back to her in terms of a betting pitcher in the next 5 to 10 minutes, but just a little bit of an ease, 2 out to 210. Yeah, OK. Look, the top three horses here, BP, all genuine Group 1 performers. And we saw La Creek trial... Uh, through the uh, through the week, and um, we'll see that trial in a minute. Um, but look, are we going to the speed map first, Steve? Is that what you're telling me? Oh, we can go to the speed map. Sorry, um, about that. here we go. 
Look, I've got, I think it's pretty simple. I think Sergio and Clever Rudds will go forward. That seems to be their A game. And who, who, who leads or who doesn't, I'm not too sure. But they'll run one and two on the map and they'll go at least even clip. La Creek Cray Grills, I think he'll, from a sticky gate, look to show a bit of intent from the first 200, 300 metres. The ideal position for him is either trailing Sergio and Clever Rudds into that third slot or one out, one back and sit outside possibly Conor Kieran or he's a doozy. Look, I've got he's a doozy. He'll show an initial intent from that one ace and <clears throat> I reckon he gets a similar run to what he showed in the Copeland's Mile over trail or two back rail. Outside that sharp and smart, I think they'll default around that midfield position uh, with Ryan Elliott aboard. Uh, Lightning Jack, similar position there. Coventina Bay, she's just showing no tactical speed this campaign and with the speed that I, that will be generated by Sergio and Clever Rudds, I don't think she'll be able to hold a spot from her gate of barrier two. So Coventina Bay to go back to the last uh, third position and then Fun Tonic and he's all, or that's all fine, will default to that last third as well. So look, overall summary, Sergio, Clever Rudds, even tempo at least. Gun runs, I think, will be sitting around. He's a doozy and possibly the fave in La Creek. Yeah, OK, BP, look, La Creek, I guess it all comes down to whether you think she can come out and do the business uh, off a sort of a 90-day break over 1,600. But she trolled up well, as we'll see in a minute. Yeah, her, her trial, her exhibition gallop, um, she, she's ready. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's ready to go here, 1,600 metres, uh, La Creek. Uh, look, she's a super mare. Uh, her, her win in the arrow field... Uh, through the, the carnival, of course, which was at Matter Matter, was, you know, it was a super win uh, and, and a real statement victory by her. And look at the way that she surges away from here, from them here on this occasion. And of course, the week prior to this, uh, she had a very good exhibition gallop out of Pukekohe. So, um, listening to Aiden's reports there throughout the week too with Katrina Alexander, the team are happy. They've got her in the right spot to be winning this race. Yeah, barrier draw. With those two speed runners uh, in Sugia and Clever Rudds. I think it just opens up the chance for Craig to be able to get that position they want. Yeah, it, be, if Sergio goes, does Sergio press on? Does she get to an outside leader or, or a one by one position? That's where it's, it, it looks logical for her to find that position, and that's where she's so good, where she can be close to speed as well. So if she can track it and, and be in that right spot, a little bit of forgiveness in the ground won't be an issue. Uh, if it does push to that six or seven bracket. Um, I wouldn't be alarmed about the price sort of drift because there are some really good horses in here and Sharp and Smart will be one of those horses that will take money uh, tomorrow uh, because of his high class ability we've seen on both sides of the Tasman. Uh, so I wouldn't be too worried about that and even she starts pushing to, to 220, 230 zone. Um, look, boys we, we, we obviously in Batania were keen to keep her at, at a low quote to begin with at $2 but there just might be that little ease out to that 230 zone maybe and I wouldn't be too alarmed about that, just I think with the, the likes of Coventino Bay, who we know takes money and will be better uh, over 1,600 metres. So, yeah, look, I, I keep coming back to La Creek's performances through the spring, lads, and what, what we've seen from her in preparation for this, and, yeah, for sure, she is the one to beat. What was the mindset, Steve, just, just briefly uh, around um, La Creek? Obviously, $2 on opening, quite short off the break. Yeah, well, I thought oh, I just went back to the Arrowfield rating. Uh, she rated through the roof. Uh, she's probably got four or five lengths off the, her nearest rivals who that are in form. Had a bit of a question mark on Coventina Bay in recent form. Just not sure she's coming back to where she was 12 months ago. And she went, she goes up 55 to 57. So there's a few variables to play its part into rating her a $2 flat fave. Um, I agree with BP. She may go out a couple of rolls. That might be down to track conditions possibly a few punters wearing where she sits in the map, but I think she'll get in. I think she either gets that trail or sits one out, one back. Just with Coventina Bay, look, I want to ask the lads here, I, I'm not sure where I, I sit with Coventina Bay. This time last year, she runs second to Thorndon Mile at 55. She goes up to 57, what she's done in the last 12 months. Now, I know this wasn't the right setup. You see her there. She's roughly around about that third to second last position down the outer. 1,200 metres down the street at Trentham. As I mentioned, just not the right setup, but they had to find a race that fitted ideally into the Thorndon Mile. You look at the at the figures, the overall class rating, it rated through the roof, 2.1 lengths above par for a Group 1 sprint, which is very, very good. But she finished a long way back, and the thing I'm concerned about in Coventina Bay is her last 200. I wanted to see her doing a little bit more through mm. the line. Her last 200 rated sixth fastest in the race. I just wanted to see a little bit more and I've got a concern that she's carrying two kgs more than you, what she did 12 months ago. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, and you're yeah. the Coventina Bay head of the Coventina Bay fan club, so what, where are you sit with it? Yeah, you sort of expected her to go up a gear at around the sort of 300 metre mark, the furlong, final furlong, and mm. she didn't seem to have that. 
um, sort of class that we've seen from her, as Steve said, 12, 18 months ago. Um, look, if she's back to her best, she's certainly right in this market. Um, with the draw, though, um, she's going to have to do uh, have a wee bit of luck, maybe, and do a wee bit of work. Uh, one I'm really, really keen on, and I've always been keen on this one, Sharp and Smart. Um, I think uh, that's one where we're going to see a wee bit of a move come race day. Uh, so I, I love the 420 at the moment. Uh, look, a Group 1 winner in Australia. Uh, he's done everything I, I asked to it. Here he is in the uh, gloaming. Um, so I just, from where he'll be sitting, um, I just think he's going to get a dream run into this race. So mm. I, I, I see him being very, very hard to beat. Yeah. Look, I, look, I know the Alexanders have got La Creek Cherry Ripe, as we saw from that trial win. She looked very, very good um, after taking on the Australia's Best and the Empire Rose. But I just come back to Sharp and Smart, and I think Team Robert, uh, Rogerson uh, will have him ready to go. There was a stack of money for him before he was scratched the other day. That's the key. Yeah. It's the key. A uh, bit of intent and... Obviously, a bit of intel from the betting market and the Guineas two weeks ago prior to being scratched off a stone bruise. And yeah. look, that healed up, I'd say, fairly quickly. I think it popped on race day on Saturday, fortnight ago. So, no dramas he's had the last two weeks to get back up to the mark. Yes, he's over 1,600 metres, where ideally 1,400 would have been okay resuming this campaign. But you've got to trust the stable. And the money was heavily on him in the Guineas to suggest he was the clearly horse to beat in that three-year-old event. This is a touch stronger, purely because it's up against weight for age gallopers. Uh, but he does have that weight relief being a three-year-old. And he maps ideally with that draw. I think Ryan can just get him out of the out of the machine, put him in a happy position, midfield, a little bit of cover, and he'll be strong at the 1,600 metre mark. So, mm. look, he's got that Aussie profile as well, BP. So he's going to be fairly firm. He's well supported. He holds the highest amount of cash thus far after 48 hours of trading. So that four dollars twenty, I think, will stay fairly firm. In particular, on the last five to ten minutes, when you got it, you're getting that Australian money. Yeah, you're right, Stephen. I mean, uh, look, this, this is a proper horse. I mean, it, he is a horse that um, has already won a Group One. He's competed in Australia at, at the elite level. Of course, he ran second in a Victorian Derby. Uh, he is a horse. Gee, you can almost just pick out any any race between 1600 metres and and 2400 metres on both sides of the Tasman, and say that he's a chance in it coming up over the next couple of months uh, and of course Graham Rogerson and the team they, they have got some dizzy heights for this bloke as well coming up uh, through uh, the latter part of the summer and, and early part of the autumn. Um, I, I can't wait to see him, I, I really can't and he is without a doubt the big danger in this race uh, with how he's come up with his exhibition gallop I was really impressed with what I saw with him uh, at Tarapa on, on, on New Year's Day. Uh, of course you speak about that uh, weight relief that he has 53 and a half Ryan Alley to board of course he's riding Tom's a kilo over in, in the Wellington Cup to 54, uh, 54 kilograms. So I, I wonder if that will be also an, an effect here with, with Sharp and Smart, who's who's currently at the 53 and a half. If he'll be at 54 for this as well, Ryan Elliott. So that's something we need to, to watch on race day. But look, he's the biggest danger in the race. And if he won the race, I would not be surprised if Sharp and Smart wins this. Maybe Ryan will be having a pie after the halfway through the meeting. You can get down, not yeah. up. Oh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no pies until after, if at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, one more race we want to have a re uh, look at the replay is the uh, the anniversary leading into this. And Conor O'Kieran was very good fun. Tonic comes out of this race, uh, Steve, and as does Sergio. So this is relevant as well for some of those middle market horses. Yeah, I thought the best run out of those three you mentioned sits with Conor O'Kieran, who finished third in front of Fon Tonic fifth and Sergio eighth. But they've gone out fairly hard to the 659.96, six lengths above par. And, Conor O'Kieran was on speed, facing the breeze, three, four wide, and he still, still boxed on with a lot of audacity. Um, this isn't quite the right race. This is uh, not the anniversary. This is the Guineas. But um, look, I think Conor O'Kieran is a, a legit show to run above betting expectation, who sits currently roughly around that $21, $26 price. Uh, as you see there, they're the right figures. 6.7 lengths above par to the 600. They've come home OK. Class rating, no knock there. And any aqua, any any rain that hits the track, mm. Conor Kieran uh, won't mind it at all. So, look, I've got him as a rough top four chance, Conor Kieran, purely from what I saw on the anniversary, against the race shape, and he boxed on well. He's fit, he's hard, 1600, no drama. Maps okay, probably roughly in that first three or four. If he can get a bit of cover against the weight for age horses, 
he can definitely run a, uh, run above any expectation. Yeah, OK, quick word on he's a doozy, BP, the, uh, the Copeland's mile winner, because we're seeing money for him, as we tend to do. Uh, off the back of boys get paid pulling off a bit of a coup in that race. Uh, he's got to be a contender, doesn't he? He does, yeah. And as you said, that Copeland's mile form is, uh, is the right sort of reference for him to say that he can be a big chance in this. I think there's a few horses here that are, are in that bracket. Jim, my old mate, Demonetisation, I'm sure he's hoping that he hears some of that rain on the roof uh, throughout the night uh, to just help uh, conditions ease a touch. Because if that is the case... We know he'll be a player uh, when that track pushes into six or seven. I, I think uh, he could be a, a, a sneaky top four bet to monetisation. Craig Zaki got his very first stakes win uh, in the country uh, aboard this horse when winning two starts ago. Um, he, he doesn't owe me a cent to monetisation, but I think I'll be certainly having something on him in, in that top four market and throwing him in a first four. Yeah, OK, well, we'll just sort of summarise the race for us. You've got a bit on demonetisation. Who's, who's your top pick in this year's Thornton BP? Oh, gee, I bounce between La Creek and, and, and Sharp and Smart, and I, I really don't think there's much between them. I, I think, uh, and if that's the case, is, is Sharp and Smart a bet at, at the $4.20 price because of that? Um, if, if, you, if you believe that there's not a lot between them, well, Sharp and Smart's paying the better price. Um, look, at the end of the day, I, I, I'm with La Creek, um, with the way that she's come up this preparation, uh, her 1,600 metre victory at Matamata was was something to behold, wasn't it? So, look, La Creek just in front of Sharp and Smart, keen to play the Quinella. As I said, I don't think there's much between those two horses with demonetisation uh, being that, that, that possible, possible little roughy if you're looking for uh, something to boost up your multiples. Yeah, very good. Paulie, how are, how are you going to attack this race? Uh, I'll definitely have a piece of Sharp and Smart at the 4.20. Uh, as BP said, I, I agree. I think there's not too much between these uh, two at the top of the market. Therefore, you know, we should be backing Sharp and Smart, right? Is that take, that's why. Yeah. So, uh, Sharp and Smart, and I don't mind he's a doozy uh, for a top three. I don't know about that Copeland's mile. I'm a little bit against it. Look at the horses at Bet Kick. I'm feeling the power. They'd be 50 to 1 in a Thorndon mile. Uh, top weight that day was Green Luck. Look, he gets a nice run in the trail, but. I've roughly marked him $16, $18, so he's unders there. He went back to back Group 3s, won the Thompson before that. Yeah, he that goes well at Trentham, well. and so the setup the last mile. start wasn't ideal. It was 62 on and off track, so he's better suited there. But yeah, I'm just not sure that Copeland's is the right recipe for Saturday. OK. You think LaCreek's going to win it, Steve? Yeah, I do. Yep. Yeah, I think it's down to BP's top two. Yeah. Uh, sharp and smart, clearly second elect. Only purely because I've got a bit of a question mark on Coventina Bay. Is she going as good as last year? I don't think so, and she needs to be with that extra 2 kg weight. And as I've said, he's a doozy. He's just not coming out of the right race for me. OK. So we've got Conor O'Kieran and the monetisation. Potentially our roughies. Maybe a bit of he's a doozy. As our no deduction specials. <laughs> Very good. Should Very I bring that up See again? if you can get it in a couple more times before the end of the show. Will do. Righto, team. Let's head to race number nine, Steve. Uh, it's Wellington Cup time. Uh, run us through this market. Headed up by a couple of Aaron Sh uh, Alan Sherrick runners. Interesting market. Ladies' man, $2.50. Hasn't budged since the opening quote. Has been well back, well back faved. Waisaki, the stable mate, 550 firmed into 4.8. As it stands right now, Friday morning, roughly 10.30, it holds two times more money v ladies' man does Waisaki. Dionysus at a $6 price, again, original quote. As a thought, just out of turn, 12 out to 13. She has the same price as Hennepara and also Contemplation. Contemplation's been well back, one of the better backed in that middle market. Uh, in my shadow, $18 from original quote of 16 and the best of the rest is Charm Star and Subtle Point at 26 each of two. And Subtle Point has been a firm of 31 to 26. Yeah, OK, BP. Look, I mean, I guess we need to touch on the Alan Sherrick runners first and go with the traditional lead-up form of the Trentham Stakes and both those Alan Sherrick runners, first and third ladies man and Waisaki and Hini Parra battling away well there for fifth as well. You're right. That was a very good form reference, isn't it, for this race? I... I Want to come to back to Stephen with one quick question. First of all, Wasaki in the futures market. H how much of a liability is this? Because let's be honest, it's 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 sort of just out, blossomed out of the tr out of nowhere in terms of being all around ladies. Man, is is Wasaki a, a horse that is a, a massive liability as well through through your futures? I think so from memory, Thirty, Can yeah. you help me out here? Look, I think both of them are an average results. Waisaki was hanging out roughly $6 from the original quote and punters dived into that. Sorry, um, Ladies Man was the original favourite roughly around $6 and they dived into that. Yes. And his price has just kept result. tumbling in in the last five to six weeks. So, look, I think there's been an even spread of money between both of them, Waisaki and also Ladies Man. I'm just going to bring it up there graphically. And Waisaki's the biggest liability. Uh, his, what's his lay price? 
can't see there quite, but it's uh, it closed at $3.50 and okay. uh, obviously we just had to tighten up that percentage to get a price at roughly around $5, but both of them pretty average when it comes to the TAB book. Sort of snuck up on us BP, didn't it, Wasaki last week because there was a heap yeah. of money for him in this uh, Trentham Stakes uh, and he's sort of back to his, oh, somewhat back to his best from won the Cup two years ago, obviously. That's right, and that, that was where I was sort of coming from because, you know, you sort of look at his recent starts and, and we know that he was probably building to a point of getting to a Wellington Cup and we knew that he was going to be in the race, but just what sort of wasaki were we going to get for uh, the, the Wellington Cup in 2023? But you'd have to say off his most recent run, um, look, he's right on song, isn't he? And he really is. Um, very similar to where he was in terms of building and building towards his cup victory a couple of years ago. Look, in saying all that, ladies' man almost profiles like Wasaki was from two years ago uh, when, when winning this particular race and, and getting the job done. So ladies' man sits in uh, beautifully the weights, doesn't she, at the 53, does it, with the 53 kilograms and the way that he's built through his win out of Harwada, uh, defeated in the Martin Cup and then went that couple better when running down Segunto and Wasaki was good between runners. There's a lot of nice runs out of that race, isn't there? I thought Henny Pata was, was a horse that could be won at a bigger price if you're trying to look away from um, the, the Sherrick and, and the James and Wellwood runners uh, in the Wellington Cup because we know a horse can stay. Uh, a runner that went a super race by winning an Avondale Cup, for instance, uh, out of Ellerslie. But... Um, Yes, very wary of Wasaki. Money move already into $4.80. Opie on, good run. Ladies' man, though, at the same time, though, uh, just seems to be tracking just as well. Has Alan Sherrick got this at his mercy, Paul? It appears so. <laughs> and it's really, really, uh, really, really interesting. Of course, Ladies' Man was the pre final field favourite uh, in that futures market, but why Saki? Now, that's very, very interesting, isn't it? Oh. It was a lovely run in the uh, stakes. Um, and it, it seems as if he's over his, uh, I think they were tendon issues uh, that he had. And it, 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 as Brenda said, he looks like he's back to that sort of form uh, a couple of years ago where he won the Wellington Cup. So we know he's going to get the two miles. He's got Opie Boston aboard. Yeah. Um, it's just a sort of sense of timing about this, isn't there? Th there is. There yeah. is. I, uh, look, uh, no slight in ladies, man. Um, certainly uh, deserves to be favourite. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, I think we're still getting a wee bit of value about a Waisaki, even though what, he's into, what was it, 480 now. Yeah, OK. Steve, look, Roger James holds a pretty top hand here, potentially, with Dionysus, who won that Queen Elizabeth Cup, and also Contemplation. I think we're going to have a look at that Queen Elizabeth Cup win of uh, Dionysus. And look, he's got a couple of nice days here, Roger, hasn't he? And, and Robert, too, of course. Yeah, 100%. What you didn't see in this race is what they did to the 600. They went very hard, 18.2 lamps above par. So it did really set up for those horses mid to back uh, position, which were, which Dionysus has found himself. Uh, look, he stalked self obsession, blended it to the race at roughly around the 250 mark, and those two kind of stretched away from the from the rest of the field late by what roughly two or so lengths. Uh, the third horse has gone on to be a sub winner on Karaka Million Night. The question mark around that purely the race shape did suit, and on the eye, as good as it was, it was passing some very slow horses. The, uh, the QE2 Cup, the last 600, was clearly the slowest on the day by at least five lengths. So that's a little bit of a concern. My other concern around Dionysus, it carried 53 in the QE2. It goes up to 57 top weight. That's a decent lift from one start to the next in a Wellington Cup over the grinding two miles. So, yeah, I've, I'll be taking a little bit of a set around Dionysus purely on those numbers in the 53 to 57. What's this next replay I'm seeing here, Steve? Wakwaiti Cup. How's, how's that snuck into the uh, into the replays this, <laughs> this, uh, for the Wellington Cup? Well, as the thought has been, uh, look, there's a lot of chit chat around as the thought that it was heading towards the Wellington Cup. Uh, it's ran in a couple of New Zealand Cups. You see it very unlucky here. Carried 60 this day. It drops to 55 on Saturday. As the thought, look, the race shape <clears throat> went against it. Um, it was a real sit and sprint affair, and it was doing all its best work once it got clear air after the last 75 metres. So, look, I don't like Asa Thought. I don't like this form, uh, but you've got to respect it. It's making its trip up from the south. It's roughly around that $12, $13 quote. It has to improve a few lengths. And I go back to New Zealand Cup where it was beat in the length of the straight. It just hasn't quite done it to me in terms of these two-mile events. Yeah, OK, BP, who else do we need to touch on here in this Wellington Cup outside of uh, Alan Sherrick's top two? Um, well, I th definitely Henny Potter, as I said beforehand. I, I, I think this horse is a, is a really big chance of running in the money uh, at a price. What, what, 
What about in my shadow? I mean, in my shadow uh, has has nearly pulled off the New Zealand Cup. Uh, what was that? Three starts ago. I, I guess you would have been looking for a little bit more uh, next time to the races. Been beaten, of course, in the Trentham Stakes uh, by In My Shadow. Uh, that currently sits at around the eighteen dollar mark. I mean, South Road was 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 a tricky watch uh, if you were on in, the, in, in that another Bella race. Of course, it had Pinion who was finishing in a second position. Contemplation is a horse who. Uh, bounces out of last weekend's Karaka Cup uh, when running second and behind Z Falls. You'd probably say that's not the worst ruffian in, in, in the race contemplation if you're trying to work away from the top of the market. Um, yeah, I, I thought if you were looking for one, I, I'd say Henny Parter would be that, the, the ruffie that, I'd, that I could entertain having something on. Look, we're seeing some money in the middle market here, uh, Paul, for horses that will probably all enjoy a wet track, particularly Subtle Point, and shout out to the uh, Subtle One Syndicate and Bob there, uh, her big fans uh, of the leg up, but all those horses in that middle market there, attracting some attention, they won't mind if a drop of rain, I wouldn't have thought. No, they won't, so uh, just keep an eye on the forecast. Um, I don't know how quickly you boys will adjust the market uh, if you do see uh, a wee bit of rain later on tonight. Um, yeah, I, I thought contemplation with yep. that uh, runner-up in behind Z Falls in the Karaka Cup, short back up just a week, but it looked like um, it just had that dour sort of stain ability mm. and um, you're going to need something like uh, something like that tomorrow, so yep. contemplation was around $13 and of course has Craig Zaki aboard. Oh, yes, that man. Uh, well, so we'll stay with you, we'll summarise the race it's at, from a betting perspective or your top four or how you're attacking this year's Wellington Cup. Look, look uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I was all about ladies' man, but boy, I've, I've, I'm really starting to focus on Waisaki now. Um, Opie bossing on, proven at the two miles, looked back to his best uh, mm. in that run in the Wellington State. I, I, I'm just really, really pumped about Waisaki. So Waisaki on top for me, uh, with ladies' man there or thereabouts, and maybe contemplation. Uh, mm. Just upsetting the uh, El Chiroc, Quinella, yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, OK. BP, uh, your final thoughts on the Wellington Cup this year? Well, I, I've backed ladies' man at $5 to win the, the uh, Wellington Cup, but I, I'm going to go with Wasaki. Um, and if you're in a position like that, you, you can back Wasaki, uh, who's at $4.80. If you think that is the biggest danger in the race and you've already had something on ladies' man in a futures market, you can cover yourself by having something on Wasaki. Um, so... I, I'm, I'm very mindful of how well he's come up in his last run. Opie aboard, 56 and a half kilograms. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Saki just in front of Ladies Man, and if Ladies Man beats him well, it's still happy days. <laughs> by, by the way, he got out to $18 in the futures market. Who, Wasaki? Yes. Yeah, okay. 18, I, I had a look for any tickets with BP's name on it, couldn't find him. <laughs> no, no. Oh, yeah, well, he's he's going to have to take the fives. <laughs> he's going to have to take the fives in final field. Uh, well, he probably, his form probably wasn't that uh, Oh, look, he'd been running Steve honest and, races. Yeah. Alan was purely working back from the grand mm. final, which mm. is tomorrow. Uh, he didn't want any extra putting on it in terms of winning any lead-up races and being penalised. Uh, Waisaki, and he was on the brink of retirement roughly two years ago. So yeah. it's an amazing comeback, a great training feat as his ladies man is as well because ladies man is the best placed horse on saturday he's got 53 on his back when you look at the ratings he's got a rating of 87 that's one rating point off the top rated galloper in the wellington cup which is dionysus who has to carry the 57. so again alan has placed this horse to a t in ladies man he gets two and a half kgs better off that swing v Waisaki from the trentham stakes i thought he was one of the better plays to or oh, tomorrow should i say at trentham and Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's got a long tail, a long tail with the scratchings of LJ who didn't make this field through a little bit of a setback in the last seven to ten days. <clears throat> I think it's down to two horses and it's both the Alan Sharrett pair. Gee, OK, that is definitive in this year's Wellington Cup. Right, we've reached the halfway stage, uh, intermission time as it was. And uh, Paul, I think we do have a minute with Mawadi, don't we? Yeah, we do. Um, one of the, well, we're in the CD, so we're looking at uh, one of the CD jockeys, uh, Tamaya Tayaro. Uh, who's been the biggest influence in racing for you? Uh, definitely Rosa Myers. She's my mentor at the moment, who's been a big help. Yes. Um, what was the first car you owned? Um, a Subaru Impreza. <laughs> Toilet paper over or under? Over. Most famous person in your phone contacts? Christelle. 
your go-to <laughs> karaoke song? Uh, my type. Favourite NRL team? Oh, don't even watch rugby. <laughs> Favourite junk food? Chocolate. Love chocolate. Who should be all-black coach? No, no idea. <laughs> Who has it easier, jockeys or trainers? Definitely jockeys. Favourite board game? Connect Four. <laughs> Union or league? We'll just go league. <laughs> Favourite cocktail? Espresso martini. Uh, fill in the blank. The best Barrett brother is? Geordie. Geordie? Geordie. Uh, first celebrity crush? Don't even have one. <laughs> <laughs> Your favourite horse you've ever ridden? Credit manager. Favourite movie? Uh, the movie after. Uh, you can invite three people to a dinner party. Who are they? Mum, dad, sister. <laughs> Race you'd most like to win? Definitely a Melbourne Cup. And a horse we should be keeping an eye out for this season? Uh, Tabachi Princess of Boyd and Burgesson. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was, that was brilliant. <laughs> Sweetie. <laughs> Thank you very much to Tamaya there. When did you film that? Because Tavachi Princess, she was spot on. We could have done with that, uh, what, three or four weeks ago. <laughs> Went round at around $17. That's right. She was on the she was on the money. And does anyone have their toilet paper under? That's another burning question I have. Oh, I think it's 95% mm -hmm. one way. Yeah, OK. Righty, I go. Team, moving on. Couple more races to preview in this edition of the Leg Up. And we want to go to the New, Ze New Zealand Bloodstock Desert Gold Stakes. Steve, over the 1600 for the three-year-old fillies. How's this market shaping up? Yeah, solid market. Uh, headed by Best Seller. Uh, 360, the original price there, remains that quite holds three times more money <clears throat> than Rocker Baby in that second line. 380 up to 420. Uh, Diz is dramatic in a full point, nine into eight. Uh, just do the favouritism order here as well. Mazzolino, six out of turn is 6.5. Uh, uh, Diagon Alley has been well supported, 15 into 12. So it's probably one of the better bat runners outside the pointy end. Academy Award, uh, just in one roll, 13 to 12. Beyond Violet, uh, 12 out to 13. Asterial from the ace draw, Craig Grills, 14 out of turn to 15. And Nancy, as she wrote, one of these four impressive maiden winners that line up in this particular race at $16. And Penny Wicker, 26 into 21, a horse that gets well backed during the week <laughs> and then can settle down on race day, but uh, at the moment is a decent liability. So overall summary, Look, best seller, best bat runner when it comes to best seller v rocker baby. Uh, but Diagon Alley is the one they've identified in the middle market. Yeah, OK, BP, look, the top two in this market uh, sort of picked themselves off what we saw last time out at Trenton and the three-year-old. Look, rocker baby looked like it beat uh, best seller on merit, but I guess that's the 12 to the 1600 that will be of interest to some customers. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and I'm guessing for those that did back best seller in this race, look, you probably walked away... Uh, a little disappointed at the same time, wouldn't you? I mean, the horse was a $2.10 favourite. Uh, she was a runner that looked to be tracking nicely coming into this race off the back of her um, placing in the 1,000 guineas. But maybe it was more about Rocker Baby being the one that was ready to win over 1,200 metres, showed that real zip, and, and, and bestseller 1,600 metres is where we're going to see her at her best. So she's got her chance to be able to right the wrong there, best seller tomorrow on, on Rocker Baby with this race going out to 1,600 metres, with the winner of this race not going out to that distance yet. This will be uh, start number one uh, at the mile. So that, that's one thing I think you need to keep on side if you were with best seller in that race and walked away thinking, looking for better, but there's a chance of getting some of that back tomorrow, I think, with her. She will like uh, any sort of forgiveness in the track too, best seller. Of course, we've already seen her win a gold trail stakes throughout the spring. Yes, it was a very heavy track. It's not going to be like that. Uh, but we just, as I said, we know she can get through the ground um, if there was to be some rain about. So I think she's the right favourite and she brings the right form from two starts ago uh, when bumping into Legato when finishing second. Where do you sit with those two off that run, Paul? I mean, Rocker Baby's sort of stretched away in the end, to be fair. Yeah, and she was impressive. Mm. Uh, I think the, be the biggest question mark is the 1,600 metres. Um, the step up, I I I'm not sure if that's her ideal distance at mm. this stage of her career. Mm. And best seller, she just didn't look as dynamic as you would have expected uh, down the straight uh, last time. I, I look back to her at the beginning of this season where she just went whoosh it. I think it was Topol. Um, around the field and um, picked up the win. But she just seems to be in a wee bit of a flat spot um, at the moment. 
Um, so I'm sort of steering away from both of those. Oh, and I don't right. mind the look of Daigo and Ellie uh, with one Opie Bossin aboard yet again. <laughs> See some money for it too. Yeah. Um, look, Daigo and Ellie, big, sharp and smart as a two-year-old. Um, so that's not the best, uh, that's not the worst, worst. form uh, to be talking of. Mm. And warmed up this with a very tidy win at Ōtaki. Um, so, yeah, I do like Diagon Alley at the price, 12s and 360 at the moment. Yeah, OK, there's a bit of value. Look, Steve, the third and fourth favourites here, Mazzolino and Dizzes Dramatic, uh, battled it out last time at Pukekohe, and both were very good. And we know Dizzes Dramatic competed in a thousand guineas and the like. I thought there was a gun ride from Craig Grills. You see Mazzolino sitting second outer. Uh, really controlled the tempo in that position. They've sprinted home, and mathematically it was very difficult for those horses that were flushed wide coming down the outer there. Uh, Denby Road being the hot favourite in this particular race. Uh, found it very difficult in terms of the race shape, but look, no knock, Mazzolino. Good, honest win, 1,600. Probably no knock there either. Maps to get a similar run. There's a little bit of speed in this race. Uh, look, uh, Nicholas uh, Royden will go forward. An Academy Award from a wide slash dicky gate will push forward. So there's a little bit of tempo. Mazzolino's not going to get the second outer and control it as he did at Pukekohe, um, Craig. But... Um, Look, one of many chances. I see it's easy to touch. Six out to six fifty. It may touch seven between seven and eight dollars on race day, just with the warm support that we're seeing on the first two favourites. But um, yeah, no knock on Mazzolino if you want to want to spec at those odds. Yeah, okay. Well, look, it probably is quite wide open. BP here, to be perfectly honest, and there are probably plenty of chances in those double figure mm. mar and, um, marks. There is. I mean, the, the, I think the other key race is, is the Wellington Guineas because you've got horses like Academy Award, who was flushed throughout from Barrier Sixteen. To still finish into fifth position, uh, I thought there was a, a very gutsy run from her. Now she's got herself an awkward barrier draw again uh, in barrier number 13, but I, I, I certainly wouldn't be put off uh, her running a race if she does something similar to the Wellington Guineas. I actually like the Wellington Guineas for one of the roughies in the race, and you spoke about it taking some money, and that's been Penny Wicker. But $21 around Penny Wicker, she's a uh, daughter of Sacred Satono. She actually ran. Uh, the second fastest last 200 uh, in the Wellington Guineas uh, a couple of weeks ago in finishing into ninth position and she was really surging past the line as well, uh, Penny Wicker. If the rain is about, uh, that's not going to be a problem for her. I, I thought she was a, a great roughie in the race at $21, Penny Wicker. And I know, that, as you've said, that, um, that the money will come because of the, the syndicate don't mind having a bet early in the week. Um, so if that's the case and that does dry up, maybe you wait a little bit longer. But um, I, I thought on the each way, Penny Wicker was a bet. Yeah, OK, fair enough. Or well, maybe it won't dry up BP. Who knows if, uh, as you say, getting home strongly last time out, maybe we're making a misread and the $21 is a bit of value. But there's one more replay I, I want to have a look at, Steve, before we move on, is um, at Matter Matter Maiden uh, with Beyond Violet, who won this race quite impressively. Yeah, this was a win. This was a win. On the eye, very good, backed up on numbers. 5.7 lengths above Maiden class, Beyond Violet. Eight races that day at Matamata, clearly ranked number one on the meeting. Her speed rating was on par with Mazzolino, which uh, was produced at Pukekohe, so you can take a line on that. I've got her as a betting prospect. She won't mind any rain, as we see there. This was a genuine soft track at Matamata a few weeks ago, beyond violet. She's promised this. She's promised this. She just gets better a little bit of time uh, early on prior to this victory. She was running through the line powerfully in strong maiden races at Pukekohe, etc., so this was coming, but you see there, look at the green, last 600, nice. Class rating, well above par, as I mentioned. And when you normalise it to what's required beating or possibly competing against the top two in Mazzolino, it's right there. She doesn't have to improve much. And as I mentioned, she won't mind any given the track if it gets to that seven, possibly eight uh, in the middle part of the day. It's a tick also. I thought she was the one horse throughout the day that you can go hard one by three, one by four play beyond Violet. Oof, I like the sound of that. Oh, we? Yeah, Paulie, sum surmise the race for us. Which way are you going to uh, go here? I might have Diagon Alley in your numbers somewhere, do you? Yes, I do. I do have Diagon Alley. And I, I like another one in the double figures, yep. uh, the Simon and Katrina Alexander, Asterial, who uh, won last start on a heavy track, so won't mind any rain uh, that may come overnight. Uh, and I thought that was a, a very, very tough run as well. So, Asterial. Asterial, each way there. Indeed, 15 yeah. and fours at the moment. Jeez, so BP, Paul, suggesting this is wide open. He's got a couple of double figures, and you don't mind Penny Wecker. So, how do we attack this from a betting perspective? Yeah, Asterial's a chance, actually, because you look at that uh, Zafira form line. Zafira, of course, then what stuck place in the Royal Stakes and then came out and won 
uh, during the week. So that, that's uh, a good form reference and did bounce out of one of our maiden of the weeks, which was the Rock of Rockburn uh, maiden of the week, which has just uh, delivered a, a number of winners uh, out of that particular maiden. So yeah, th this is an open race. Th th if you like one, and, and look, Stevens found one, Paulie likes one at a price, and uh, I'm liking <laughs> Penny Wicker at $21. So we're probably not really helping too much here in terms of trying to narrow this race down because we have <laughs> mentioned a lot of horses, but I just think it's that type of race if you wanted to steer away from the pointy end of the market to just try and find your, your right runner at the right price. So I I'll go Penny Wicker uh, at a price, and at the same time, very mindful that maybe best seller can produce her best run going back up to 1,600 metres. So I think she is a worthy favourite at the same time. But you're Penny Wicker at the price. Penny Wicker, $21. You like a stereo? What, 16, Paul? I got the makings of a box first four here, maybe. Let's do it. <laughs> what, and your one, Steve, Beyond Violet as well. Yeah, look, we've just spoken about the, the queries around the top two. Uh, Rocker Baby stepping up from 12 to 1,600 metres. Look, she's contested a 1,400 metre vet at Tadapa, the soliloquy, but the jockey lost her iron that day, so it's a bit of a forgive. Uh, and then also the question mark around the favourite and bestseller, we probably expected a little bit more, mm. purely on what the money was invested on her yep. and her SP at Trentham a few weeks ago. So with all that adding up... Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's open. no surprise that we're speaking a few in that middle market. OK, very interesting betting race this year's Desert Gold Stakes for the three-year-old fillies. One race we want to have a look at at Rickerton before we depart for another week uh, is race number eight, Steve. But tell us about the track conditions down at Rickerton. What will we be striking down there tomorrow afternoon? Soft five currently, and that was uh, Pentrometer reading was taken just after 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, four millimetres overnight. And the rail's back in the true position, and the weather forecast looks OK. So uh, probably starting off at a five. Uh, early doors tomorrow, Thaddeus, mm. and possibly a, an upgrade. But um, look, they haven't raced at Rickerton for a while, so fingers crossed the track plays nicely there after Cup Week, and we're in for a good day. We have the drone shots at Rickerton. Where have we got any drone shots at Rickerton, Paul? I think we've got all the drones here today. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Heavy on the drones here. They're all here. Yeah, okay, very good. Okay, Steve, race number eight on the card is a race we want to have a look at. It's the Spates Timaru Stakes Open Handicap over the 1,400 metres. Walk us through this market. Four horses in single figures here, headed by Perfect Scenario at 4.2, Ever Quinella at 4.8 in that second line, Rock Sensation, 6 and a turn to 5.50, Times Ticking, $7 flat, double figures around Live Drama at 10, she has the same price as Feeling the Power, Kaimar War, OK Pal, and Jewel of Patch, $15 each of three, and our Echo Best of the Rest at $16 off a peak of 18. So, look, not too much movement thus far. Uh, Thaddeus has mm. to be said, no clear slash strong lead, but perfect scenario heads the court 4.2. Look, it probably looks the most obvious sort of form line, BP, uh, perfect scenario and feeling the power in the open handicap at Rickett and last time, which perfect scenario won. Uh, it was pretty strong, wasn't it? Yeah, look, it was. And, and look, the, the horse uh, has had a recent troll uh, at, up north and behind La Creek and uh, is sent back down to the South Island to, to tackle what is a very good stakes race, isn't it? Worth $65,000 for the Timidu Stakes over 1,400 metres. So, yeah, this is the, the, the right reference, isn't it, with the way that Perfect Scenarios really run away from them and beating a number of race rivals, uh, feeling the power and jewel of Patch and Co. Uh, in behind. So you can understand why he is the favoured runner uh, and uh, one of the biggest dangers off the back of that since freshened and, and that recent trial. I, I do like... Um, have a Quinella runner number seven. Oh, I thought this source presented as a really strong chance, the daughter of Prasia. Uh, you go off her most recent run, which of course was in uh, the, the Timidu Cup when running fourth, and that was in behind Humbucker. Now, of course, we have seen Humbucker uh, come out and be a recent winner uh, on last Saturday, just gone in the Gore Cup. Well, Humbucker was uh, possibly heading towards uh, a, a Thornden Mile. So I think this is a, a very good form reference. And also, if you go through this form, the fourth horse, uh, sorry, the third horse in this race uh, was the Buffer. Uh, and then the Buffer, of course, has then been able to come out and win the Kamara Gold Nugget. Gold Nugget. So there's a lot to like about this particular run from her uh, when finishing into fourth position. Uh, and I, I was happy to, to say that she might have been a bet in the race where she gets down to a nice cushy 53 kilograms, uh, does Ava Quinella. So, yeah, that, that would be the way I'm leaning in the race so far around the second favourite. Yeah, Paulie, what are, your, what are your early thoughts here? Perfect scenario was good in that replay, but it has been a little while between drinks. It has been, but it's always very, very hard to look past a Tiarco runner. Um, and although a little disappointing in the Copelands, the, um, the win in the prelude was very, very good. 
Uh, I'm looking a wee bit further down the page. I don't mind I like the look when you do that. of Kaimar War. Um, look, very disappointing in the Hazlitt, but was much better two starts back at Rickerton and at the distance. Uh, gets in well at the weights. Um, and Ace Carol Lawson, um, one of our better apprentices going around at the moment, uh, jumps on board. Um, I wonder if his, if his parents tennis fans or... Lawson, Carol. Ace. Oh, I see lots of... Texas Holden. I must no. be a bit slow this morning, hey. Lawson, Carol. I, I missed the Ace thing completely, didn't I? Ace Freely. No. Ace of Base. <laughs> ace of Base. Oh, could be Ace of Base fans. That's all the sign. Very good. Moving on. Uh, uh, Steve, perfect scenario. Been off the... Get us uh, back on track. Yeah, please do bring us back to a bit of uh, normality here. Uh, look, perfect scenario. Hasn't run since early November, so any concerns there? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um... 58 against uh, the opposition. I don't think it's too much drama. Um, I don't mind Rock Sensation though. Look, it's a race I, I probably just will be watching on the day, but I thought Rock Sensation against track tracks that don't quite suit on that west coast, uh, Kurau, um, where else have they been racing? Wingatui, Cromwell. They're just tight turning tracks and the way it sits in a map, it gets back and I think back to Rickerton will suit this horse. Sweet spot is 1,400 metres. There looks to be even tip, but I think they'll go hard. There's a few horses that will go forward. Uh, the likes of feeling the power and our echo from a sticky gate, but I thought Rot Sensation back to Rickerton was a was a nice little combo. You got what Rock Sensation, your numbers, Paul, is anywhere? It's in there, yes, mm. yes, yeah. I'm just looking to make... Um, Quite a bit of money this weekend. You know, <laughs> so I'm, that's a good, good I'm ambition. Looking, I'm looking outside the box. All right. <laughs> okay. Hey, I like it when you do that. I like it when you do that. Kima War for you. BP, uh, summarise the race for us. Which way did you lean? And it sounds like we might have another makings of a box first four at this rate. <laughs> yeah, we certainly do. Um, I'm still trying to get over um, Ace Lawson Carroll, um, <laughs> Ace of Base, and <laughs> the tennis fans. It's very good, Paulie. Um, <laughs> um, I, Ever Quinella is the one I'm going to go with, though, as my uh, top selection in the race. But yeah, I, I think away from some of those at the, at the top of the market, uh, with, uh, as we said, perfect scenario bouncing out of uh, last run in the Copelands and, and a good trial recently. I thought Times Ticking's trial was okay, too. Uh, running second behind We Will Rock, who will run in the last race at Topor, uh, where they have terrific fields for Sunday's race meeting. Uh, we know how good We Will Rock is in terms of a horse who's competed at stakes level. Uh, this horse, he's been a high-class galloper for a number of years for Albie McGregor. Uh, he does have the 60 kilograms, uh, but he's uh, a horse that looked ready, I thought, off the back of his trial, and he sits at a quote uh, of uh, $7. So, yeah, it's a really good race. And, and what there is a couple of real tidy races down there, the Marlborough Cup, uh, looks to be a race as well to look forward to down there. So um, I know they've had a lot of a bit of a heat wave uh, coming across uh, Canterbury over the next few days, uh, around the high 30s. Uh, so yeah, a real watch on on how those track conditions are because it'll be the first meeting back, of course, uh, since the the remedial work they've had done since uh, Cup Week. Too hot for me. Uh, this 20 degrees here has got me sweating. Paul, what what way'd you go in the end in the Timaru Stakes? Look, I'm going to go each way on Climar War. Yep. I do like the way, uh, well, we've been having a, a wee bit of a drift over the last hour or so. 15s now and $4 top three. Oh, you're getting more than you've even written down. I'm very happy. <laughs> very good. OK, team, it's time to get to our best bets of the weekend. We'll go back to you, BP. Uh, I'll say an unlucky second, but second for wild night for you last week. We're, we're going to right the ship this week, I know that. Well, beat Legato home, so um, we thought that was the biggest danger in the race, um, to beat that runner home. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to find some sort of silver linings anyway. Um, I'm going to go to the first race uh, at uh, Trentham, and I like tarted up. Look at the day at one here. It was heavy, it was wet. If it rains and it keeps on raining, it's not going to be an issue. If it doesn't, it's still not a problem. This horse ran super behind Maven Bell recently. Uh, ran the third fastest at last 800, 600, 400 and ran the fastest last 200 behind Maven Bell when running second and that was when caught three wide the trip uh, in that race out of Pukekohe Park and beat home master Brutus who then nearly beat home Maven Bell in the El Manzor Trophy. I think she's a great bet in the first race and our man, yes, Craig Zaki is aboard, drawn in barrier number one. <laughs> you could do worse than Craig Zaki tarted up for BP as best bet. Starting early race one, Trentham Paul. Uh, you've been on a tear, uh, as be fair to say. Another best bet home for you last week. Uh, what was it? Uh, Green Ion. Green Ion, that's right. And the sprint, very good. Plus 54%. I, uh, 
I don't know if I'm seeing it right, but where'd you land this week? Uh, I'm going to go with Ivy Dazzler in uh, race five at Trentham. Look, it was a tough run last time. Drops back in grade, has won at Trentham. In fact, I think we're seeing the uh, win there at the distance. Uh, gets a two kilo claim with Ashvin Madu do do push pineapple shake the tree ashvin madu do do push pineapple grind coffee very good you know you're steve yeah thank you yeah you passed that uh, one off yeah, i don't know if i can mention mine now after that um no we'll, we'll go to trentham as my best bets uh in one of the features race nine the wellington cup over two miles uh, settle down, Steve. Ladies, man, uh, look, I just think that Alan's been working back from this race 12 months ago with Ladies, man. It won the key lead-up race to Trentham Stakes. It's the best-placed horse on the day. In fact, probably up and down the country, Ladies, man. Uh, rated 88, highest-rated horses rated 89. It sits on the minimum of 53. It's got a lot going for it. Two miles, no dramas. Probably its biggest danger, which we've mentioned on the show, is the stable mate in Waisaki, but I'm very keen to go ladies' man as my best play. Well, ladies' man to take out the cup. Not a great result in futures. No surprises there. Going to be a bumper day at Trenton tomorrow. Time to wrap it up, Paul. Uh, Twitter poll. We need to get some boosted runners for the weekend. How do we do it? Yeah, well, the boys have already taken care of the mile and the uh, Wellington Cup, so we've looked uh, elsewhere. Um, so we've looked at race six, best seller. Uh, Uderzo in race 10 at Trentham and then down to Rickerton, race 5, second thought and race 8, perfect scenario um, go to the Twitter poll have a vote, leave a comment and then uh, you're in the chance to win a $100 bonus bet, last week's winner was at RJ Hammond, RJT Hammond oh correct, I missed the T, yeah maybe RJ Thammond, no well, that's possible. This is possible. Oh, well done, RJT Hammond, with your $100 bonus bet. Good luck with your investments there. What else do we need to know before the weekend, Paul? Uh, no deductions, uh, mm, no surprises, of rain course. About. If there's a wee bit of rain about, that really does come in handy. We've got the bonus back uh, blitz uh, as well. Uh, the first four races at Trentham, at Rickerton, at Rosal, and at the Valley. Uh, what have we got? We've got the Express Payout as well. Mm, that's been going very well. It's, it's been very much appreciated by punters. Uh, we've got the Racing Mega Multi Buster, if you like your racing multis as well. Um, I don't know. There's just, there's just so much going on. Love Cup Day. I'm pumped. I'm looking forward to it. You'll be on track, no doubt. I'll try to get here. Yeah. BP, what are your movements tomorrow for the weekend for Wellington Cup Day? Uh, yeah, I'd love to be there for sure. Uh, it's been a, a great meeting to attend and also work at. Uh, but yeah, I'll be in the studio tomorrow looking after Rickerton, uh, of course, uh, and uh, ducking away to Topor uh, to get on track and uh, enjoy uh, the races there on Sunday, the uh, last little getaway before um, the school holidays come to a, a, a final end. It felt, felt like those school holidays have gone for quite a long time, so uh, I'm looking forward <laughs> to the kids going back to school, uh, that is for sure. Uh, just another note too, uh, Waikato Guineas on Wednesday to look forward to. Of course, that is a pivotal race towards uh, then the Avondale Guineas, and then of course the New Zealand Derby, We will see a lot of those horses uh, eyeing up uh, their Derby prospects um, for most. Uh, two runs out from uh, the New Zealand Derby, that will be on Wednesday. Wednesday out of Tarapa. Okay, when will that market be out? In one tomorrow, second. Tomorrow, our nominations today, so yep. it'll be interesting to see the market. I'll be yep. intrigued to see if Wife Tech accepts. Okay, thanks BP for your efforts. Thank you, boys. Enjoy tomorrow. You, I know you will. Not on course. First no. time for a long time. I'm just uh, holding fire because I'm up early to catch a flight up to the sales on Sunday. Oh, yes, sales mm, kick off as well. Off That's going to be exciting. Good luck there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, boys, thanks for your efforts. And thank you for your efforts as well in joining us in the leg up. We'll see you in seven days' time. Start the water blasters, boys. <laughs>